Ah, oh. wow. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a monthly revenue recap of a whole bunch of different games from my favorite Billy Billy, uh, if, <laughs> Is, is that a thing? And so for those of you who are not familiar with this kind of content, essentially Old Mate compiles a whole bunch of monthly revenue and he or a whole bunch of different gadget games, mobile games, usually focusing on the China based ones. However, he certainly does cover a lot of the major Japanese ones too. And so the data is in for the month of May. And without further ado, let's just jump into the revenue. I will also kind of spell out some of the news related to some of these games because there is actually quite a lot of exciting things happening for global. I'm gonna stop stalling, let's get on with it. All right, and so to kick things off, we have these two new games which launched in China. I haven't seen too much news about them. However, with that, there's not really too much to talk about. I'm just gonna move on. And we are going to start things off with Honkai Gakuen 2 with, you know, pretty mediocre revenue. It is what it is. It's predominantly popular in the China region as well as a little bit in the Japan region. And then we have Honkai Impact 3, which is essentially one of the biggest games in China right now. However, my guys, as you can see, okay, you kind of can't see. Let me, uh, hopefully that's a little bit better. But before we move on, I did forget to introduce all of the different Chinese because uh, very, very sorry. What we have along the top is the server types. So we start with Chinese. This one is Japan, this one is Korea, this one is Taiwan, and this one is global. It says NA, but typically it refers to global. Along the left-hand side, we have iOS and Android split up into the two categories. And then with the numbers themselves, they are measured in one RMB. What that means is that this one, for example, 273 is 2731, where 11 equals 10,000. And so therefore that is 2.73 million. 2.73 million RMB. Exchange rate that into USD about like divided by five and you'll have your true revenue in USD. And so the last thing is that the color coding they use is a little bit funky. They use red for increases. So as you can see, plus 200% compared to last month's revenue. All right, and so with all of that out of the way, uh, we can finally get into the video itself. So this one is China. As you can see, China is still dwarfing everywhere else. However, traditionally, especially for Honkai Impact 3, it is very, very popular in the global region and in the actual Japan region too. So not very surprising. However, what is surprising is these increases. That's plus 200% which means it actually freaking tripled compared to last month. As for Korea server, it's also doing exceptionally well. We've got Taiwan server doing raises and then the global server with the doubling in revenue on both device types, iOS and Android. And I suspect the reason is because of this over here. Ah, oh, wow. And so my dudes, this is something that I am kind of missing. I'm missing the context as to why the revenues are kind of spiking or declining like this. If you guys do see any games that you do play and you can have some kind of explainer as to why the revenue went up or down, let me know why down in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. And so yeah, for Honkai Impact 3, I do think it is cause, uh, cause of the new mommy. With that being said, let's move on. All right, and next we have Tears of Temis which is doing all right. It's actually doing pretty good for like a Otome game, you know? However, I do think that there are a couple of stronger ones in the market right now. However, just from looking through these revenues, it looks like it is in a very, very healthy state. And so next we have Genshin Impact. Wow, that is a, that is a lot of greens, uh, which corresponds to a lot of decreases. However, I do remember, if I'm not wrong, this context. I do believe the reason as to why the spending was so freaking low was because uh, we were stuck on Ayaka, which is not a bad thing, you know, Ayaka's cute. We were stuck on the Ayaka banner for a lot longer than usual. And so people probably, also the battle pass, the battle pass hadn't come out yet, the new one. And so for Genshin Impact, especially because Yelan, there was no new content, no new characters or anything, uh, this is to be expected. However, like, frick, no new update and it's still doing this kind of money? Like, bruh, it's utterly insane, man. This one right here, this is on Myoji, which is, it's, it's crazy how popular this game is in China because that is not insignificant revenue. Well, I mean, it makes everything else look really insignificant, but personally, I always just wonder how on Myoji does so freaking well in the China server. Like, what is it about it? I, Maybe one day I'll go figure it out. All right, and so next we have an Omyoji spin-off. It doesn't look like it's doing overly well. However, it looks kind of healthy. It looks all right. And next we have Arknights. All right, wow. 
look at that. I don't know what in the world happened in the China and the Taiwan server, but in China, freaking five times the revenue plus about 400%, that's five times. That's utterly insane, dude. Those starting to look like Genshin numbers, you know what I'm saying? Oh, actually, not really. Like, nothing looks like Genshin numbers. And then on the Taiwan side, like, holy crap, they actually just multiplied by, like, five times, five and a half times. As for the other servers, not too much going on, but, like, everywhere is still looking extremely healthy. All right, so next we have GFL Girls Frontline. Um... It's looking all right. We have a lot of growth across the charts, which is a good thing. And so, yeah, just in terms of the numbers, like it's looking relatively healthy. It's nice that Global is actually pulling its weight over here because clearly GFL is not as popular in the other countries outside of China and Global. All right. And so next we have, this is Project Neural Cloud. So it's doing all right. I think it released a few months ago. It's looking pretty stable. As for this one, I'm not 100% sure what this is. However, it looks like it's only a China and Japan release. So kind of understand. And this one is going to be Azure Lane. Let's have a look at those fat. Holy crap. That revenue is, is pretty nice, man. China in the lead with that massive, massive revenue followed by Japan and then Global. Another quite strong game for Global. I am honestly happy to see it. For those of you who don't know Azure Lane, it is essentially one of the lewdest, however, one of the most free to play friendly games. I would recommend it if you like to leave your computer on like all night. Yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> all right. And so next we have Ether Gazer. Now, this is a really interesting one considering it actually opened service in April 22. This revenue is actually fantastic. I don't know if it's going to be able to like, you know, maintain that kind of revenue. As we all know, there's initial hype and then like typically speaking, it drops off kind of, I mean, it didn't stay true for Genshin. <laughs> but for a second launch month, that is incredible revenue. I hope it does well. It actually looks like a lot of fun. If you guys don't know what it is, it's essentially PGR with uh, cuter waifus. <laughs> God, is that biased? Okay, and then now we have the Nikki games, which are freaking crazy. So this one is Love Nikki, which is essentially a dress-up game. I'm, you know, that revenue makes me feel like, holy crap, it is just so good. And we've got Global coming in at second, only behind China. I kind of want to play it now. <laughs> And then right after this, we are going to have Shining Nikki, which I believe is the successor. And as you can see, the, the revenues are quite high across the charts. It is very, very healthy. Both of them are very healthy. And uh, this one is, I believe, another Otome game. Unfortunately, I can't remember the English name of this one, but it's looking like it's doing pretty healthy in Taiwan and in global. But Japan and um, Korea, not looking too hot. All right, and we have Punishing Grey Raven. That's healthy. That is quite healthy across the charts, maybe except for Taiwan. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see Taiwan dropping down. I thought that it was a more popular server. It looks like we have China leading in the first place, and then we've got almost a tie between Japan as well as Global. However, what is cool to see is the revenue increases. We got a 51% and 82% in the Global server. I think it might be Lunar Month. Correct me if I'm wrong, PGR guys. From a general PGR point of view, they're eating well. They're pretty stable. I don't see no end of service there. All right. And so, whoa, not bad, not bad. So this is Tower of Fantasy. And so for those of you who don't know, Tower of Fantasy is getting a global release this year uh, before October 1st. Now, in terms of the release date, I would say that there are a few different issues with that. I probably wouldn't release then. However, do mark it into your calendars because I think Tower of Fantasy is going to be great. It's certainly one of the highest quality gadgets on the market. Actually, is it an MMO? Does it classify as an MMO? I'm not sure. Ooh, Alchemy Stars. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. So the interesting thing about this is that I don't actually see the Japan server. I'm wondering if it's lumped in with like this one over here, because the way that Alchemy Stars has divided their servers is quite interesting. I believe there's an Asia server. There's a global server, which is this one over here. This one's the Asia server, but then there's also a Japan server. They also have DMM. And then we have a Taiwan server over here. I am pretty sure there is a lot of revenue that is not accounted for, which is the missing Japan. However, if we're looking at other places in the world such as global such as Taiwan and Asia it's looking all right it looks stable ish and I would say that although it's starting to look really bad it's not we have anniversary coming up right after this month I'm sure the revenue is probably gonna double maybe even triple we'll see all right and we have GCG oh that's not good man that is not good that this is what EOS is kind of looking like unfortunately these numbers are not looking good they're not looking good at all I look at the global one and I'm like oh my god how are you guys still running this game in terms of the China one 
I don't know, man. I don't really want to know what that says. I'm just going to I'm just going to move on. I mean, I kind of kind of think I know what it says, but yeah. Anyway, this one is Final Gear. Now, Final Gear also not doing too hot, as you can see, even in its home server. However, for global and for Japan, it's doing OK. And then we have, ah, what is this? This game, this one is Mahjong Soul, which is a relatively popular game. Wow, it's... <laughs> It's doing quite well in Japan. And then as for Taiwan, as well as the global server, not doing too bad. You know, it's definitely not EOS looking. Now, oh, Illusion Connect. All right, all right, I see you. And so I have to say, the global revenues is actually not looking too bad. It's looking like it's okay. Somehow the global server is leading in revenue, which is utterly crazy. And then I look at China and I'm like, bruh, I don't really want to know what that says in Chinese either, man. But alas, I kind of know what it means. All right, let's 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 move on. Okay, and so we have Ensemble Stars here. This is the OG Ensemble Stars. It's not doing too hot. However, the reason is because of this guy right here, which is Ensemble Stars Music. And so if you guys are into these kinds of games like Ensemble Stars, be glad because I have a pretty cool announcement to make. And that is that Ensemble Stars Music is coming out in about six days, I think. And just to be very, very clear, I'm talking about the global server over here. So maybe next month or maybe the month after, we will start seeing some revenues. However, in terms of the existing revenue, like frick man, this freaking IP is crazy. And these two are the new games that released in China recently. So that one only launched like what, maybe two weeks ago. And then this one, maybe like two and a half or three weeks ago. Unfortunately, just judging by these like early revenues, it reminds me of like the Soul Tide. It reminds me of like the GCG, the Illusion Connect kind of team. Here. However, we do need to keep in mind that this one has only been released for about four days as of this data and this one for about seven days. Yeah, this one's not looking too hot, my guys. So we've got Revive Witch over here. It's doing okay. It's, it's not doing too bad. And then we have Soul Tide over here, which is not doing too well. That's a, that's a yikes. I think this is just China revenue. Uh, for this one, we have Artery Gear and this bad boy is going to be releasing in about like three to four days from now. And so my guys, I really would encourage you to try Artery Gear out if you do like the Epic 7, the Summoner's War type of gameplay, the dislike kind of gameplay, except Artery Gear has a lot of fantastic QOL as well as like, it's pretty generous from what I can see. All right, otherwise I do see a lot of end of service. Let's keep moving on. I mean, the gacha game market in China is absolutely saturated. It's really hard to do well. And then these three, oh, I see figure fantasy and it's doing okay. Uh, it's, I, I kind of expected a little bit more revenue considering like the amount of advertising spend they actually poured into the game. And then another four where we, I can't believe there's a freaking reborn game, man. But wow, that basketball game over here, that's, that's freaking doing work, man. They're eating well. And then we have the freaking Naruto games. What the frick, guys? Look at this shit. What in the world, China? If anybody knows why China is so freaking obsessed with Naruto, and I mean like, you know, Naruto is a freaking cool IP, but I don't know why it's doing like so well. It's doing incredibly well. And then you've got other IPs like Fairy Tale, just like freaking barely alive. Yeah, if you guys know the reason as to why Naruto is so freaking loved, let me know down in the comments below. Frick, man. All right, and so these ones are like the JP games. We have FGO coming right out the door and oh, Oh my lord. Revenue is through the roof for every single one of these countries, every single one of these servers, even global, where global is kind of like the second highest revenue. We've got Japan and then global and then China kind of match with Taiwan. However, what is interesting to see is that this server, the Taiwan server actually quadrupled, maybe like quintupled in revenue in one month. Somebody has got to explain that. Like, holy crap. Maybe they got the release of like a new cracked unit. Let us know, man. All right. And so right after that, we have Guardian Tales, which is doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good in all of the different servers. Somehow, I'm always freaking surprised by how well Guardian Tales does in China. Like, mm, I don't know. Maybe there is something that I'm not understanding there about the Chinese market. All right. Now we got our pre-con, which is nice. And that is a very healthy looking NA server. As for why exactly, I do believe, I think this was the ReZero banner. And so, yeah, it's looking all right. You know, that gives me a little bit of confidence. Maybe when we get some of the other collabs, we'll still get some of this nice revenue. However, what always gets me is like how much the Chinese also like pre-con. You know, it just makes me smile. I'm glad that there is another server that is almost comparable to the JP service. All right. And it looks like we have Bang Dream next. That is quite solid across the charts. Not looking too hot in Taiwan, but even global is looking 
kind of okay. This one I think is Magia Records. It's a Madok game. All right, and so here we have Shadowverse and it's looking like it's doing okay everywhere. Not doing too hot in China though. I suspect there's probably a lot of card games there. Uh, this one is another Eden and wow, that is that is very, very healthy. I do hear a lot of great things about another Eden. Let me know down in the comments below. Would you recommend the game? All right, here we go. Here we go with the Yu-Gi-Oh, holy crap. And this isn't even the final form. This is just Duel Links in which it is like, it's pulling sick, sick revenue. But the real juicer is the next one, which is this one. Look at that. This is Master Duel and this is just the JP server revenue. Holy moly, man. Love Live, uh, it's doing pretty well. It's very solid. It doesn't look like end of service to me. And then we have Blue Archive over here. Man, it makes me so happy to see these kinds of revenues. This one, I believe, what happened last month? Ah, it was the bunny month. Wow, that is um that really, really pushed the revenue up. It actually doubled, uh, yeah, doubled on both device types. Pretty freaking insane, the power of freaking bunnies. And just comparing these numbers to the JP numbers, like, dude, JP is doing really freaking well for like a one and a half year game. But global, to be able to actually dwarf that a little bit, to be like comparable, man, I'm proud of you, global. Uh, wait, should I really be saying that? <laughs> All right, so next we have Near Reincarnation. Uh, it's looking okay in Japan. It's looking like solid in uh, Americas. And oh my God, Uma Musume. <laughs> this game will never cease to impress me with like the amount of numbers they do. They've got like a freaking VTuber channel. They've got so much going on. This is one of the biggest IPs I've seen in a while. And for those of you who don't know, I believe a Korean server is actually coming very soon. All right, and so this is Toho Lost World. Not doing too hot in China, but Japan. Japan is doing fantastic. World Flipper, why don't they have the revenues? That's really interesting because I think World Flipper had a collab unit. Maybe it was in the last few weeks, like so it might not fall into this month. But other than that, across the charts, man, World Flipper be doing pretty well. It's actually like, it's actually really, really freaking stable. All right, and so we have Heaven Burns Red. That might actually be the last game. That is insane revenue, holy crap. Honestly, I don't really know if this game is actually ever gonna get a global release. Yeah, okay, that is gonna wrap up the 2022 May revenues. And so general feeling about all of this, there are a couple of good ones. Like I was surprised to see Ethergazer do so well. Like this one over here, that is pretty insane revenues. And if you guys don't know who published Ethergazer or like who developed it, it's actually the same people who made Azure Lane, who are doing fantastically well as well. So actually when I put it that way, it kind of makes sense as to why they're doing so freaking good. Otherwise, I think generally speaking, aside from Alchemy Stars, it looks like most of the games, they are as expected. And so guys, that is going to bring us to the end of the video and that is going to lead us into the secret question. First of all, which of these games do you guys actually play? Because I would really love some explanations as to the revenues. For example, like Taiwan server for Arknights, maybe most of you won't be able to tell me, but holy crap, why? Why was there a 4.5 times, 5.5 times multiplier on their revenue? And for these games that you play, were the revenues as you expected? For example, did you think that GFL was going to be kind of like this? It does look like GFL Global do be eating pretty well. My guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. If you did like this video, then please consider, you know, liking the video, subscribing, or turning on that notification bell. But otherwise, my guys, as, uh, as Lucia once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.